in which the task was to uh, summarise the works of Marcel Proust in 15 seconds. <laughs> I, I make that as a sort of a, a spurious joke, but there's something about, sort of quite Proustian in a way, about, about this performance I felt as I was, and I made some notes, which of course I'm going to ignore, um, about this, in that I think both of these poems were, were written, very different works, um, in 1922, 99 years ago, um, as, we, um, as we stand here. And yet their works, I think, bring that time to us and also sort of take us back. They're, they're works for all time, both of them, I think, in very different ways, British subjects. And both of these poems were written by um, people with strong <coughs> connections, neither of whom were British citizens. Of course, Najrul was in the British Indian Army from 1917, saw service in the First World War. Elliot moved to Britain in 1914, just before the war. He was going to go to Germany that summer, but obviously his plans were changed. Um, <laughs> And so they're people very connected with the, the circumstances, the political circumstances of the time, both responding in different ways, of course. In 1922, Nazarul was um, tried for sedition um, uh, by the British, and T.S. Eliot, five years later, became a British subject. So we can see there's different motions going on there. But in that sort of context, they're both responding, I think, to a world that's got a sense of what happens now. The British Empire, as I said, was the most powerful thing in the world, but it was starting to crumble. The war stretched it. It's a period of immense change, and the arts respond to this. We've got Ulysses comes out in 1922 as well. Also, Brecht um, had his first play performed in 1922. In Paris, you've got Cocteau with stage sets by um, Picasso doing um, updates of classical um, Antigone, for example. And so there's something about fragmentation, something about reassessment going on. And I think both of these works together address holding fragments together, as, as Eliot says, particularly the shard stored against the ruin. But also there's a sense, I think, with um, Nazarul's The Rebel, that there's something, it's almost like a comic shedding fragments as it goes through. There's something about change in both works, and I thought they were brought together and conversation was mentioned in a wonderful conversation. Because when I was looking for something that holds these two works together, and more as a poet than as a, an academic, what struck me was the music, and I think that came out so well, because in before tonight I just listened to lots of... Um, performances online of uh, the rebel in the original language which of course I don't understand but I think it's something you can emotionally understand as you can with Eliot. You know, Nazarul was one of the most um, prolific songwriters um, anywhere and Eliot's of course bringing together music hall and jazz and ragtime, the old Shakespearean rag and so on and it's the music that holds it together for me. And it's what makes them absolutely vital in this moment. And I'm sure everyone here, as we absorbed ourselves into this wonderful performance, felt just how of 2021 they are in a world that's fragmented and a world that's holding together old ideas of itself, adapting to things, and in which a voice of sort of essential humanity and of personal dignity like Nazarul, I think, and there's that sort of idea of individual spirit against what presses down on it amongst all these fragments and bits of different culture and so on. And I think what this performance did wonderfully was just bring that moment of 1922 and 2021 into one thing, in that whole sort of Ber Bergsonian idea of duration, which of course Marcel Proust picks up so well. So I, I tell you about if I had another 15 seconds, <laughs> all about Proust, but the fourth volume of uh, Alain Recherche de Pont Perdue came out in 1922, exactly the same year, this idea of time being looked at. 
And I think this was a magnificent thing to remind us of the timelessness and vitality of great poetry. And thank you so much for that wonderful performance. And I'll stop now.